Have you ever wondered how people tracked the winter solstice before calendars existed? Like, how did they actually know when it was happening? I wondered the same thing, so I looked it up. In the Northern Hemisphere, the sun doesn't rise in the same place every day. Through the fall, it rises a little farther south along the horizon and its path across the sky gets shorter. But the change from one day to the next is small, sometimes barely noticeable. They paid attention to where the sun came up relative to fixed points. A hill, a tree, a stone, the edge of a building, a doorway. And they remembered those positions. Day after day, they could see the sun creeping lower. As an aside, this is elite pattern recognition behavior. Shout out to the neurodivergent ancestors who noticed tiny changes and refused to let them go. What's important here is that this wasn't guesswork. It was accumulated observation. As you get closer to the solstice, something subtle happens. The sun's movement slows. For several days, it rises in almost the same spot. Not exactly the same, but close enough that if you've been watching carefully, you notice the change has stalled. That pause is the solstice. You can't wake up one day and say, oh, today's the solstice. <laughs> you only know it because you remember where the sun was yesterday and the week before that, and you can tell it's no longer moving lower. That means this knowledge lives in memory. It lives in comparison. It lives in people who are paying attention over time. And once you realize that, the solstice stops being a date and starts being a skill. Knowing when you'd reached the lowest point told you where you were in the season. It told you the decline had reached its limit. Not that winter was over. It was absolutely not. It was just getting started. But that the direction was about to change. That kind of information mattered enough that people didn't leave it to chance. And that's where the next question comes in. Do you have knowledge that only exists if someone keeps noticing it? Once it lives in memory, once it lives in comparison and attention, how do you make sure it survives longer than one person's lifetime? That's where ritual, landmarks, and eventually calendars come in. And that's going to be in part two because there was no way I was going to be able to fit all of that into one video without doing it badly. So my apologies there. Stick around for part two and I'll tell you more.